What's up guys, it's just Shake Reviews and behind me is a beautiful 2015 Genesis Hyundai Genesis. Now, you may be wondering, wait, 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 wait. I thought Genesis was a brand. Yes, it is. It is now a brand. Back in 2008 or just, just at least when this car came out, but back around to the hundreds, like, you know what we need to do? Make a luxury brand because we everybody else has a luxury brand. Why don't we have one? So let's make one. What are we gonna call it? Oh, uh, let's call it Genesis. Why? Because we can. That's really what they did. They created two cars. Technically one car because it's literally the same thing. They created a car called well called the Genesis. Literally, it had no name. It was just called the Genesis. It has its own badging, as you can see, has its own badging. And literally, it was a sedan version, and then they have a coupe version. The coupe, all the coupe is, it's just a shortened sedan. It's like the Civic, pretty much. So, and this car, I quote, this specific car was made, to, was designed to compete with cars like the Infiniti G35, G37 driving experience. Why? Because that's literally what was popular. Now other things. You have three, you have three trim options when you get this car. Now, obviously, it's no longer made, but if you are looking on Auto Trader, you have three trims. You have the base, you have the R spec, you have the premium, well, I guess four. You have the premium, and then you have the track, the all out track version. And you have two, uh, two engine options, and each with those trims. You have a, you have a I think it's a 2.0, 2 2.0 2 four cylinder, turbocharged. Believe it's by Theta, something like that, from Fancy Snaggins. Then you can get the 3.8 Lombardo V6, making stock around 360 horsepower at the engine. But this thing's too. So we're gonna go over all other stuff about that. But right now, let's go walk around. All right, here is the wonderful, the one, the on owner of his name is Kerbix. Kirby. Kirby. <laughs> it's in my phone, in my phone you're known as Carbex. I mean, it's a first for me. I'm okay with it. So he's a cool guy, really honored. He, if you don't, if you ever heard of him, he owns this really cool company called Cartel. What all they're all about is... We do events, we do entertainment. So music, comedy, dancing, cars. We try and get into a little bit of everything. But mostly, just want to be part of the community. Exactly. Really cool guy. And look, here is the Qatar mobile. Absolutely beautiful. Now there's a lot of mods. First, we're gonna talk about this beautiful front end. Love the headlights. This is the updated. They updated this about- 2013. Yeah, true. Second generation. Absolutely, Bill. I love the gen. To me, the I, I like the first gen, but it's so data look. It's so weird data looking, you know what I mean? It is. It's, it was their first attempt at a, at a sports car. So this is technically Korea's first sports car. So it's something different. They went after something different. They succeeded. Yeah, really good. All right. And they changed a couple of things in the grill. And but okay. Tell us what you done. So do you want to do that as the walk around or do you want to do that all at once? Because it's a list. We uh, we walk around and you point out what you've done. Sure. So on the front, as you can see, pretty much I just sprayed the stock grill purple. It's temporary. It's actually about to go to ABS mesh. So there's a badge swap on the front. The placement is where it is on the sedans. Other than that, I painted the hood vents. Okay. I considered making them active because it does help with temperatures because the Lambda V6 does run very hot. But I also have stuff done to the interior of it, which we'll get to in a minute. So I don't want too much rain and whatnot getting into the engine bay. Okay. So it's normally, it doesn't have the Hyundai badges on it. Uh, it does usually, yes. Oh, wow. So they did come from the factory badged as Hyundai's despite the fact that the drivetrain, the powertrain, and the actual chassis and frame of the car itself was the sedan chassis and yeah. everything. But they went ahead and they continued badging as a Hyundai. I guess they were trying to help people like blend and merge up into their brand. Yeah, but and the new and now the Genesis brand is right. completely separate. And what I've heard, they are bringing this car back, but it's not gonna be called the Genesis, it's gonna get its own name. Yeah, so right now they have the G70, the G80, the G90. They have a SUV coming out and they have an electric hatchback concept car coming out for Genesis. So right now the closest thing to a sports car they have is the G70, which has at the high end a 3.3 twin turbo, as well as all wheel drive model. And I have test driven one, they're quick. Oh wow, nice. All right, let's go walk around. Beautiful wheels, love these, love that, that is, that is actually, I'm normally not. Like the dirt, yes. <laughs> no, I'm normally not a purple fan because I just, 
that's not my thing. Sure. That looks dang, dang good, especially against the white. Man, that is beautiful. So those are actually Factory Magic Purple STRs. They're a discontinued color. Oh, wow. It's a style 905 wheel. It's an 18 by 85, and I have those. That's a square setup all the way around for me, although obviously the tires are staggered. It came stock with the Brembo brake calipers as well. Oh, this nice. This is an Ultimate Edition. So in the last oh, couple nice. of years, they had an Ultimate Edition, which came with basically all of the R-Spec performance packages. Mm as well as all the luxury packages from the grand touring and the track models yeah so it's so ultimate it's not just it's not it's a separate trim from everything else so here's the kicker each year they basically changed all the trims what so it was great so when they first started you had an r spec a base a track a grand touring and then the turbo models came also different as the premium and a base as time went on, they discontinued the Grand Touring model, I believe, in 13, as well as the Turbo model entirely. So as of, I believe it was 2014, they had three models left. That was the base, which pretty much had no options. You had the track, I'm sorry, the R-Spec. Yes. As I said, each year it changed. You had the R-Spec, which was track ready and had all the performance options. And then you had the Ultimate, which had all the luxury options on top of all of the race options. All right, that's real cool. Love your signature Cortel. Beautiful. I love the way he did that. That is so that's uh, I had help with that kind of stuff. So to be honest with you, we were struggling a lot trying to come up with a, a logo per se. I knew that I wanted it to be kind of in your face. So I actually had a vending session that I was coming up with uh, all team bash and all team bash actually offered to just basically throw some paint splat on my ideas and came up with this so it's it's not necessarily a font itself it's layered and actually multiple pieces put together oh wow so it's and like it, so it's like the uh, fast and furious uh, decal you can say that and there's a lot more that we're going to do to the outside of this car in particular oh, yeah but those are surprises for later oh, yeah it's, it's a to me it's a good looking car but despite all the coloring on the outside is it look much you not much has changed on the exterior which is good mm -hmm. but you definitely need to to make it your own oh yeah always all right keep walking love the purple fuel cap okay. now is that paint or is that a wrap so that's actually avery so my friend and i it was our first time trying wrap out so we did the roof the shark fin and the fuel cap mm. because i have a sunroof it made it very difficult we <laughs> weren't able to do the mirrors at all just because of how many lines and blink and the blinkers were on it but it is avery wrap that's it nice. was relatively easy. It was just very time consuming because we were first time beginners. Ex exactly. First time for everything, especially you're doing it yourself. Yeah, and taking off a satellite ready shark antenna is a pain. <laughs> All right. Beautiful dark, obviously dark antenna taillights. Are they Pacific brand you want to mention or are they just? They are. So there are a lot of aftermarket parts coming out for this car after it went off market. <laughs> just being honest. As people unfortunately wreck them or total them and put them off market, the aftermarket companies realized this was actually a pretty cool car. We can make money off of this. So Spec D is the brand behind these taillights. And if you like, they're actually sequential. So oh, nice. it was taken, the style is taken From after the brand new Genesis sedans, which is the scales. And obviously the sequentials are usually only seen on Mustangs. Personally, I think we did a little bit better. Yeah, looks really good. Bias. In my opinion, the Mustang tail, they're cool, but it's, it's kind of it's kind of rare looking when you're looking at it. It's going dun dun dun. It's it's really weird. I like that sequential. It's like it's like the Audi lights. Mm -hmm. Very yes. very very European spar, but uh, but still its own thing. The interior of it, the wiring. One of them came with the switch turned off for the sequentials. The inside wiring is a rat's nest, but I love the lights today. <laughs> someone someone did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful exhaust. I appreciate it. And obviously it's made by some crazy company. Let's hear the name. So actually, I wouldn't say it's a crazy company. It's a very high-end company called Arc Performance. Oh, wow. So most people, if you're familiar with this car, you're probably familiar with Arc Performance because they're one of the major providers for our aftermarket material. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the Arc DTS system. And uh, minus the mufflers on the very back is a header's back three-inch system. Oh, wow. So it deletes the secondary cats to the car. It deletes the mid pipe resonator and is essentially, you could say, minus the mufflers, a straight pipe system from the headers. Wow, that is cool. The car got extremely loud, extremely fast. All right, now the trunk space. Let's see how much trunk space you get in. Sure. Do you pop it? You I will. So basically, 
It only pops from the fob or inside. There's no lever or anything, so just go ahead and put your fingers up underneath the bottom. Oh, up there. Go ahead. And it'll hold itself. Oh, wow. That's, that's, a, bit, that's a bit of weight to it. It does. It is first and foremost a luxury coupe as opposed to a sports coupe. So yeah. it is a grand touring style car. The yeah. weight shows. Yeah. Oh, nice. My opinion, two, there's two things that there's one thing I like, one thing I don't like. Love the space, plenty of space. Here's the problem. This. That I is. Totally agree. No offense to people who own these cars. This is. Oh, oh my God. It's just. You can't, it's hard to fit. You have plenty, you can easily fit like a big suitcase in there, but try fitting it through this hole. You may be surprised to learn that when I go out to shows as cartel, I can fit the entire booth, 10 by 10 or 10 by 20, and everything in it, in this car. I like puzzles. That's probably that's for, I bet it's, a, and how hard is it to fit, to get it all to work? Oh, everything goes in from every direction imaginable <laughs> except the sunroof. <laughs> But it fits. Haley's <laughs> fits. So, not bad. You get your aligner, you can put all your crap in. And I think that's it for the trunk. Nice car. Nice I car. That. And obviously, this is the Hyundai. This is a Genesis, not just a normal Hyundai. So, you get the Genesis badge instead of a Hyundai badge. And that's actually an LED backlit badge. Oh, wow. That's cool. I appreciate it. When the lights are on, it's white. When I hit the brakes, it's red. So, essentially, there's only one provider for it. So, the quality is not ridiculously high. Oh, wow. But. I enjoy it. It adds a little bit of... The badge genius. itself lights though. It does. Oh, wow. What part? The entire thing? Or? Uh, I can go ahead and I can turn it on. Yeah! Let's see this light. Let's see this in action. So, it's going to be hard to see in the daylight. Yeah, I see it. But it does actually light up. At night, it actually reflects... Oh, I see. I see. It's, this, oh, yeah. it's, the, it's the outline of the badge. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I appreciate it. That is, wow. Honda killing it with luxury options. But again, that's not a luxury option. It is an eBay item, I'll be honest. Right. Hey, it's cool. It is. I appreciate it. It's one of my favorite pieces on the car. All right, let's head inside. To get in this car, first thing first, you pull a handle right here and you lift it up crazy. I'm just kidding. It's not, like, it's not, it's not that kind of a car. Ooh, wow. That's a big door. They are, once again, in this first and foremost luxury coupe. The car weighs over 3,600 pounds from the factory. Man, look at look at the look how much Jesus! Look how much this is. That's at least this is literally this is like two doors, almost two like a door and a half. You're hurting your feelings. It's beautiful though. <laughs> no, I'm I, I like I like big doors. To me, when I think of when you think of a sports car, you think small door, small thing. I like big stuff because it makes it easier for me to get in because I'm big. All right, now you have your options. So I have to back it up. Oh, you're fine. I'm a six foot two guy. Oh, yeah, nice. Ooh. Oh, wow. There's a little bit more space than, uh, than wow. there is. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus, this is wow. Whoa, for the start this car? This is the push start. It is a luxury car. Of course you get push start. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Wow. This is cool. I appreciate it. Nice infinity sound system. Nice. I believe that's made by infinity, I think. I really don't know. I know that it's a... Uh brand that Hyundai puts in most of their luxury models. Yeah, I've effort. seen it before. It's not, it's a good sound system. The car actually has an 11 speaker surround sound system, which what? includes an 8 inch sub stock from the factory in the rear. How do we fit all that in here? Your guess is as good as mine, but again, Alright, right, get in here, man. We're going to talk about the interior. Sure, sure. First impression, this is a very nice car. Wow. Just looking at, just taking it all in. This is very beautiful looking. I love these. Oh, I love these gauges. That is really smart. Look at that. That's that is smart. That I've seen a lot of people put gauges like everywhere, just try, just trying to fit them. What I like about this is it's it's put you in the middle of the gauge. That is nice. That is. 
They're trying to keep things compact. Yeah, that, that's that's smart. I don't like that. That's not, ooh, love these dials. Did you do these yourself or did they come like this? They actually come like that. On my last Genesis Coupe, I actually took the dashboard apart. Hmm? So these were purple. Oh, wow. Uh, some of the detail pieces were too small, so I wasn't able to do huh? those. But in the 2.0 models, torque is actually a place with your boost gauge. Oh, nice. But for the 3.8, they had to have something to sit in the middle, so that's our torque. I like I like it gives you these nice dials. Mm -hmm. My car, uh, my Corolla, has this little, this little screen, and you scroll through it. <laughs> and you press it to get what you want. I like it's right there. You don't have to screw anything. You just look at it. Boom, right there. Mm -hmm. Why can't why can't companies get this right? I mean, come on. We just give us this. This is way easier than scrolling through your infotainment. All right, speaking of infotainment, let's scroll through it. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so essentially the infotainment systems. When the car first came out in 2009 through 2013, so it did last into the second generation. They had a standard entertainment system that was not widely hailed as successful. There were some updates to the 2014 models, mm -hmm. and that went across both the sedans and the coupes, to where the system itself, even down to the touch screen, is much more responsive, as That's... it doesn't take my finger press. Um, there's a lot more options. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So, between your Bluetooth, your FMAM, everything. That's, that's nice. Which I won't get through because God only knows what's playing on my phone right oh, yeah. now if I start it up. Yeah. That's but nice. There was a lot more stuff to do. The only part that a lot of us have had concerns about was because this wasn't, as you said earlier, deemed as a Genesis branded car. So you got Hyundai stuff. They're unwilling to actually update these to include Apple. Uh, was it Apple Music yeah. and Android? Android, so, Android, yeah, Apple, Apple CarPlay, Android, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, yeah, yeah. So I can't actually mm -hmm. update my. It's it's updatable. It's definitely something they can do, but they just don't want corporate to. Corporate refuses to do it. Yes. Yeah, but I'm sorry about that. It's no, fine. No offense. This is a. I like the size. Million people. That's too small. Uh, actually, for this kind of this size of a car, that's actually not bad. You just you just the way that you, I'm sure you said in some Z's, some Z's, right? I have. Yes. That they have the worst, and the most oldest infotainment. It's so tiny, <laughs> so annoying. This is right there. It's big. Mm -hmm. I like the way this style is it. right there, so you can easily see it. I like that. Mm -hmm. Is it small? Yeah, but you're in a small car, and I kind of. This is actually but the size of my Garmin, my little Garmin nice. navigation, and I, I like that. I'm used to that, and I like that you can eat when you're say you're going to Alaska, and you and that's easy to see where you're at. That's that, that's very good. Now only, the only here is the downside about an infotainment. I'm um, no offense. I don't like the the graphics. They're kind of crap. And once again, this was not even after the update was not hailed as a widely successful entertainment and nav system. From my understanding, the newest Kia and Hyundai models and Genesis models have a much nicer, more fluid, oh, yeah, and I visually know. appealing system. I drove the new Veloster and and that infotainment was nice. It was mm -hmm. good compared to this. It, it's it to me this looks like it's from the early two like 2008, which essentially when this car was come out. Uh, and I will say that, for example, on the lower end trim packages, they didn't even have their in, info or nav system. That was not a standard option. So on your base models, they have a strip that literally sits about like this, and that's about all you got. Okay, that's don't do you not do that again, Hyundai. Another thing, this is common with all many old Hyundai's. That right there, that metal thing. Yes, it, it's good, but look at those graphics. That is, that is bad. No offense. That is just ah, uh, when everything else looks so nice and modern looking. But that's just one thing. I love this right here. I love that. That is that is nicely made. Ooh, that's nice, gorgeous stuff. Well, if you, I, and I love the, this console, the way you designed it. I absolutely am in love with this. It's easy to get through. Yeah, the only the only problem is you have some plastic here, which is this is a luxury car. I would expect you know some some nicer material because it's sure. hello hello it's a luxury car. The Infinity everything off, is all off Maserati. Yeah, everything is you know. My, low, everything is leather, nicely made, aluminum. Everything is nice. Now this, this is nice. Don't get me wrong, Honda. You've done a good job of styling. This thing is very sporty, very aggressive. I feel like I'm in a sport car. The only problem with the car, it's 
plastic. Oh, that's nice. That's soft. It's soft. Very hard touch. Ooh, it's engineered leather. Yeah, it's no, no, hunting. No, you don't. You don't do that. My Corolla has this crap, and it's a, and I can forgive Toyota because it's a Corolla. You pay ten grand for the darn thing, whereas this you pay like forty grand for this, and you get no. But you would say I like this right here. That's nice. So it's like. They, they tr it's like it's like they didn't know what they wanted to make it so like uh threw some stuff here to me it's like a child making a sport card now here's where most genesis drivers would agree with you because despite the fact that there are certain things as you said like the detail work that's very fine um a lot of the stuff that they put effort into makes a lot of sense <laughs> however building their first sports car as you said again, a lot of it doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. And I really do believe that come roughly 2020 to 2021, when they do come out with a new sports coupe, I believe they'll have learned that lesson. I hope so. And and give it a new name, because otherwise we're going to be confused of what this thing is. <laughs> Trust me, I do like the stop start, but now did it come like that? Oh yeah. It Almost all of them came like that, unless they are... I, I see believe what, the R-Specs came with that's not, I see what. I see why you did the... No, did it come? Did it light up purple like that? Oh yes, yes. Oh wow, that's cool. I do like the blue ring around. I I, I like lights. That's just me. I like light thing. I like when they put. Oh, of course. Stuff. I like I like it when a brand pays attention to detail. Mm -hmm. This car is goodly designed, but it has some. It's it's like a mix. Like I love the design, but I don't like the little car touch plastic. I love this. I mean, this is just so. An aggressive looking. I feel like I'm in a almost like a like a futuristic race car or something like that. It's really cool looking, but again, plastic. But you know, it's not that bad. Do you think we need to know about the cool interior? Because this thing, this thing is nice. So I will say, as far as the lighting is concerned, uh, except for LED conversions and the cabin lights, yeah. all the lighting, interior lighting, including the door sill, is actually all lit up from Hyundai, the color choices, the glow, the shades. And it's nice. In my opinion, day and night, the dimness or the brightness regarding which time of day it is, you can is all really well laid out yeah. and balanced. Can't say that for the turbo over there. Ha <laughs> ha, Toyota. It has this orange. The only thing I don't like in my car is this orange lighting. And of course that was what they were doing back then. It's so ugly. This is this to me when I look at these lights, it feels like I'm in a luxury car. I love this leather wrap. Again, leather wrapped parking brake plastic. Aluminum plastic. Aluminum plastic. Leather plastic. Again, Hyundai. Get with it. Now, talk about the wheel design. Okay. I like it and I don't like it. I like the design. But for a luxury sport car, this doesn't make me feel like I'm in a sport car. I feel like I'm in a Hyundai sport car, not a gen, not a luxury sport car. And again, with the badge, they should have put Genesis badge or something like on there. It's a part I have in the house and have not had a chance to. Oh, so it comes, it comes factory with the Genesis. No, it comes factory with the Hyundai badging, as did the entire car. As I, as I mentioned earlier, it was built on the entire Genesis platform, but it was not badged as one. So there are badge swaps made. I just find that gluing a badge over that one is rather tacky. Yeah, exactly. To me, it's like, okay, Hyundai, why did you make a luxury sport car and specifically want it to be a Genesis and not put your Genesis badge? It's like, it's like they were ashamed of what they made. And they're like, we don't want to put a Genesis badge, put a Hyundai, just put the Hyundai badge. Like, no, no, Hyundai, no. If like, It's like saying, it's like putting a Lexus on the Corolla. That Corolla had a Lexus badge. Like, you don't do that. People, people will get mad of all the crap. Like, again, why am I giving crap of all the hard touch plastic? Because this is a Genesis, not a Hyundai. If this was a Hyundai, what, whatchamacallit, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't care a hard touch plastic. I would expect that from them. And if I got some nice leather, I would actually like, oh, this is really nice. I'm glad you put that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, they didn't, they didn't market it right. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. And again, a lot of the drivers would agree with you on most of your points. But I do like Ben styling, absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, I know what you want. Me drive the car. Yes, this. I'm not gonna join your car. All right, guys.
I am behind the wheel of this beautiful Genesis. Oh, wow. The turn circle is very tight. Oh, yeah. First impression. I feel like I'm driving a monster. Man, that, that is a good exhaust. Very grumbly. Brr. Man, this 3.8 V6 is nice. <laughs> that is three inch arc performance. Jesus, and I wasn't really going that fast. That didn't feel fast. Hyundai what? did that right, in our opinion, is they definitely made the weight of the car balance out the power. Wow. That. That's insane. Good God. That is loud. That is not just. I've driven cars that are loud, but they don't feel loud in, in, in the inside. That was like the GTR loud from the in, from the outside. Uh, definitely, definitely not the same horsepower rating though. I can oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Loudness maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is kind of, this is nice. It's, it's it is comfortable, very comfortable, very. Compared to now, I haven't driven the G thirty seven, but I have driven the G thirty five. Compared to that, it kind of feels similar you know what i mean yes it, it feels it feels current obviously it's, it's korean it feels comfortable but not not perfect you know what i mean i've the lc 500 i haven't driven yet i've sat in mm -hmm. it's a bit more comfortable but that car's way more expensive than this car so yeah. i would expect it to be more comfortable but yeah this this is a this is not bad this is really cool i like this car i appreciate it I like the noise it makes. That's, that is that is absurdly loud. I've driven loud cars, one being a Ferrari, which you haven't seen the review, link in the description below, and GTR, Honda Civic Type R, you name it, I've done it. Yeah, they're like an air, they're like my Corolla compared to this. I'm not kidding, this thing's loud. Now, I know you guys may be thinking, this car ain't that loud. It's it's loud, but it's not, it's not too loud. Now, unfortunately, this is just with my camera and well, just cameras in general. They don't really mute the audio. They can only get so much of the audio. It's just how my how technology works. This car and this car is really loud. When I say this car is loud, I'm not kidding. This thing is super duper. Like it is crazy loud. He drove, and it's like usually. When I drive cars, they're very quiet on the interior, inside. When outside, it's screaming like hell. This car, it's the exhaust is so loud. It feels it shakes the entire car like some kind of like like a like an earthquake. It's that loud. When and not just that, your ears too. And and when you're outside, it's obviously it's louder. It's so loud it almost like pops my eardrum. It's that loud. <laughs> it's that. It's really. It's really good. So yeah, do I like it? Not too much. I don't really like it that loud. Like he said to me, it's just too loud. I like loud cars, but like I said, this is just a bit too loud for me. I don't really like hurting people's ears when I go by the neighborhood. That's just that's just me. You may like doing it, but that, I'm not really into that. Man, this 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 is fantastic. This. Steering race is good. Acceleration. Uh, could use a do clutch. She could use a do clutch. Maybe, have. maybe on all, maybe an all-wheel drive. This is the ZF transmission that's in literally every single car no, known to man. That's from Japan and Korea. So, eight-speed automatic. Not the best, not the, but not the greatest. Well, unfor uh, unfortunately for pure driving enthusiasts, this transmission out of this and the manual was the better of the two. It was more reliable. It's snappier. So at heart, Hyundai once again mm. took a lot of aim mm. and maybe didn't hit all the marks. Yeah, this car does need a lot of work. No offense to you, it does need a lot of work to make for the new one. Like I love these gauges, but I don't like that metal thing. I love all the nice styling. Don't like the materials. It's like it's like a 50-50 car. This, if I was gonna give it a score, I would give it a five out of ten. Because it's good, but then but all the things that's bad make it not so good. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't. 
fun. But I don't give those kind of things because every car is is subjective. Every it's, it depends on what you think. It's all, all about how the car make you feel, and I like this car. It's very very enjoyable. I I enjoy driving this, but it feels too Hyundai-ish and not really Genesis. What do I mean by that? Well, this car was, like I said, it was meant to be a luxury car, not a Hyundai. Wasn't really meant to be a, just a regular Hyundai Sport. Like the, they have the Veloster for that. To me, this feels too much like a Veloster, and I drew. And the new Veloster, that thing is that thing is fun, but to me, this doesn't really feel like a luxury sport car. It's comfortable. But it's not like it's gonna win any award. It's not gonna be like, oh, this is so I can drive this for, I oh, I such relaxing. It's average. No offense. It's a great car. But it, it's 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 just average. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nothing really special about it. Whereas the new Veloster M, that car, and I I I I will stand by my opinion, is one of the greatest cars I've ever driven. That is, is such a wonderful car to drive. And that is going to be the first of many in the N-Series from Hyundai. Uh, it was, the N-Series is actually hosting the same head of development as was working on the BMW M-Series. Yeah. So there's a reason that yeah. that Veloster N is such a driver's car. Yeah, it, it's, oh, you, know, it's so far. you know who did it? Albert Beerman. He is a great guy, and Albert Beerman, if you're watching this, I highly, I highly Doubt it because you probably don't watch. You have way too much, way too busy designing cars. Bring back the Genesis, man. Bring back this car, but make it enjoyable. Make it, make put the put the M badge. Just make it a great driver's car because you have shown, especially me, that you can make a car. You can make a car fun. Make Honda great again. <laughs> We're going to build a Korean wall of Korean cars. That makes no sense. Reason country guitar is like, hey, take the car for a few days. I'm like, okay. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind because this, this is essentially a good car. It's a great car. And for what it is, the gas mileage is not terrible. Even yeah. after all of the things that have exactly. been done to this car, it gets roughly 22 miles a gallon. Yeah, that's not bad. And highway, I've seen as much as 30. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I like about this car. Especially from Hyundai, even even when they are first introducing something, they at least make it okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There are some brands that, oh my God, they really don't know how to make cars. You know what I mean? Maserati, for example, gorgeous, gorgeous cars. Terrible build quality, crap stuff, crap stuff. A lot of they didn't make it okay. It's not even okay. It's not even okay. You know what I mean? This is at least tolerable. I can tolerate this. It's not great, but at least it's tolerable. You know what I mean? That's just that's just a couple of things. But they, like I said, Genesis, they need to make this album man, get him on the phone, say, hey, make this car good. Okay, he will. I know he will. I know he will. He did it. He's done it time and time again. He can bring back this car. He can make this an amazing car. You know what I would like our BMW to do? Give a big finger to BMW. Make this better than the M8. Make it better than the MX. I love the M8. It is such a gorgeous car. Everything is so gorgeous. He needs to beat that car. If he can beat that car, make make me enjoy that car more. I will, I will buy a Hyundai. I will buy this car. Buy this car, the new one, as well as the Veloster. I'm, are you hearing me, Alabama? If you do it, if you make this car better than the M8 and the G and the Q, what's it called? Q60, Q50, whatever it's called. Yeah, the Q60. Yeah, whatever it's called. If you can make it better than those cars, I will buy it. I promise you, I will. These guys will make sure I do. So yeah, I think that's about it. Great car, love the exhaust. It's. All right, guys, we're going to give it some gas one time on one loop around, and then we got car before this camera kills me. But yeah, I, I, I actually adore this car. It's not the, it's again, it has, it, it, there's a lot of problems with this, but you know what? It's okay. It's uh, at least they tried. You know what I mean? At least Hyundai tried. Why 
you get this car that what make that's what makes this car okay and not bad that right there is what makes this car good disclaimer your car will not do that stock whatsoever yes you 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 need to do tip lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots <laughs> but i like this car like, you can mod it it may not be great but you can mod it make it make it great the aftermarket is steadily expanding oh yes all right guys thanks so much the wonderful man kirby be sure to check out the channel for more reviews we're going to on through just a second um it's about up all right thank you man pleasure now, obviously, by hearing um, the thing you've been saying in this video, this honor for you isn't going to just be mostly good or mostly bad. It's about, it's 50-50 with this card. Here, so, here are the good things. I love the styling. It's beautiful. It's so aggressive looking on the inside. And it's it's so gorgeous on the outside and so aggressive on the inside. It's, just, it's so beautiful. Now, I think the first time uh, Honda had done this, I reviewed a Troy 13 Elantra last year, and it has similar styling, but that was a sedan. This is a sport car, and it's so I kind of expected Honda to do this, but man, it's they they really knocked out of the pot. Absolutely beautiful. All right, next up, the exhaust. It is so addictive. It's so oh, it's so really really gets your blood running. It's it, I can listen to that all day. Well, can maybe not all day. I probably get tired of it. But so it's it's so beautiful, but it's a little too low. But that's just the exhaust. I'm sure there's an exhaust out there that sounds just as good and not as loud. But you know it's so good. Next up, here are some bad things. First up, the uh, driving experience. It, to me, I I like it. It's a it's a really good car, really comfortable car. But it feels too much like a Hyundai. It doesn't really feel like a luxury car. I've driven many luxury cars and they are way better. They have a unique feel to them and they're very comfortable. Really, you just want to sit in all day and drive all day. Don't really want to do that with this car. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, it's a good daily driver, but it's not a car you want to be in. You want to go and relax in and just take a have your girlfriend take a long naps in, and then when you're not, when she's looking, you floor it and it makes a bunch of noise. That's kind of what the LC is all about, but, oh, I mean, sorry, not LC, LC 500 is all about, but this car ain't that. It's just too Hyundai-ish. It's just, they need to make it a Genesis. I mean, I haven't driven the new Genesis sedans, but I, from what I heard, they're fun, they're fast, and they're very luxurious, and that's what a luxury performance car is. This isn't. This is just a Hyundai that's fast, but it's still a Hyundai. It's not a Genesis. It's a Hyundai. So that's what it is. All right. Next bad thing. I uh, don't really like the in, the materials. To me, there's there is a some nice things. Like I like the leather, I like the aluminum here and there, but there's too much plastic. I mean, this is a luxury, luxury, luxury. Not. Nah. Not compact, not a regular, not a, like I said, it's a, it's not, it's a Genesis. Genesis, not a Hyundai. So, you don't put a bunch of plastic in a Genesis. Especially if you're trying to, it's just your first car. You don't do that. You're trying to wow people. When Lexus first introduced their brand, the first car they made, they made it. Put lots of leather, lots of technology. They pretty much, it sounded a lot like the Mercedes, but they literally made it more affordable and just as good as the Mercedes. That's and well, actually more reliable, so it's a little bit better than Mercedes. That's why they do it. This, this, is this, this, no, no, Hyundai, no. This isn't how you make a luxury car. I'm sorry. And that's about it for the bad things. I'm, I have a lot more things I didn't like it, but you know, that's they're about the same. But as I said, like, if you want to see more honest reviews? Be sure to check out my channel for more. I'm sorry this isn't a... I didn't absolutely love it like I usually do, but this this kind of... I'm, not everyone... I believe, like you said, not a lot of, all the gripes I said, everyone agrees as well. It's kind of a thing. Albert, all the... All Honey needs to get, get Elba Beamer on the phone, have them have him redesign the car, and boom, you'll sell me lines. It's just magic like that. So, I'm looking forward to see what Hyundai does in the future. Be sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe for more honest reviews, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.